So what I've got here then is a uh, little patch antenna for uh, 5.8 gigahertz FPV. It's from uh, Aonway, uh, however you pronounce that, Onway, Aonway, and uh, it's a uh, upgraded version from their previous one that people uh, had a lot of bad reviews about that one. They said it wasn't, uh, you know, didn't work very well. But uh, I've got this one in. This is apparently their new one. It's a uh, 6 dBi. Uh, patch antenna so it's not a particularly powerful one but they're probably right on the mark with saying this is uh, 6 dBi but uh, it does apparently work over quite a large frequency range now the frequency range is uh, 5.705 gigahertz to uh, 5.945 gigahertz so that's quite a large range and it has a VSWR of 1.5 now this one is right hand circular polarised but um, it's got this quite shiny black uh, solder mask on here and I can't quite work out how they're doing that so I think I'm going to have to try and strip this away so we can see where the traces go and how they're getting that uh, right hand circular polarisation on there but uh, before we start doing that I thought I'll uh, hook it up to the spectrum analyzer just to see what its frequency response is over that uh, large uh, bandwidth that they are claiming and uh, it's a, only a small antenna as I say it's on some semi rigid coax here so let's hook it up and uh, take a look and see how well it performs over 5.8 gigahertz so I've got the little patch antenna set up as you can see here directional coupler I'm uh, feeding in a uh, sweeping signal from uh, 3.8 gigahertz to 8.5 gigahertz and uh, I'm feeding off here into the spectrum analyzer I've got the patch antenna pointed down so I'm not interfering with it too much over the top of it here and uh, here it is on the spectrum analyzer so I've got the uh, spectrum analyzer centered on 5.8 gigahertz here and we've got two very nice frequency responses here and uh, here this is the best one and then we've got this one over here now this good one over here this would be around the uh, 5.7 gigahertz mark and this one here will be about uh, you know 5.95 gigahertz over here and then we've got this curve here this uh, quite large curve and uh, again you know this is a frequency drop so it's going to be responsive in this area here this is uh, 5.8 gigahertz here and this will be 5.9 gigahertz so really you're mostly interested in what's going off in this section here you know most transmitters work around uh, that frequency 5.8 gigahertz to 5.9 gigahertz although some do, do go down a little bit more but uh, you can see the frequency response here is quite poor I mean this is the baseline across here and this is the drop so it doesn't exactly perform well around uh, this area here it performs best down here and then it performs well again up here so if I uh, track the spectrum analyzer back this should be around the uh, 5.7 gigahertz around here so I've got the line now centered on 5.7 gigahertz and as you can see it's uh, spot on to that uh, really good first frequency response there so uh, you know if you're operating your uh, transmitter in the uh, 5.8 gigahertz frequency range then you're not going to get good performance from this if you uh, operated a uh, transmitter which I'm not sure is legal in most countries at uh, 5.7 gigahertz then you're going to get an excellent frequency response and this antenna will perform really really well but because most people use it at 5.8 uh, gigahertz you know 5.845 gigahertz you're not going to get the same performance from there now this antenna also claims a VSWR of 1.5 now I can tell you that that's not 1.5 across the band here they've taken the best measurement and the best measurement will be here at 5.7 gigahertz the uh, VSW of uh, 1.5 will not be 1.5 in the rest of the band it will not even be 1.5 here at this second frequency response so they're not really being truthful there uh, I think what a lot of uh, manufacturers should state is say an average uh, VSWR when they're making something that's such a wide band operating antenna 
So I've got the spectrum analyzer centered on the uh, second frequency response here and that's at 6 gigahertz so it's a little bit higher than the claimed bandwidth but uh, you know not too much but again the uh, two very good frequency responses are on either side of what uh, people normally use for FPV. So this isn't going to be too great for your uh, FPV setup if you've got your channels in that 5.8 gigahertz range because the frequency response is pretty poor in that area. You, you can see from this curve, you know, the more you get into the top of that curve, the worse it's going to be. And uh, this antenna, it's a little bit cheeky to call this such a broadband antenna. You wouldn't get this in the uh, lower frequencies for say the uh, ham radio operators. Often you'll uh, be able to see a, a, a dipole antenna or a discount antenna that works in the lower frequencies that they use and uh, they tend to be sold as a dual band antenna that will work uh, you know well uh, down at uh, something like uh, 450 megahertz and then you'll get a second frequency response like this one here at say 900 megahertz so it will be sold as a dual band uh, antenna one thing they won't say is that it's a broadband antenna and it'll work on the uh, channels the frequencies in between those two marks and that's exactly what we've got here they are uh, selling this antenna for FPV telling you that it's uh, a broadband antenna and works from here all the way up to there but uh, as you can see it really doesn't yes it will work but it won't work well so it's a little bit of false selling and uh, as for the uh, VSWR they would have measured it there if you uh, measure it here you're going to get a totally different VSWR so the manufacturers are saying that uh, the specifications for this little uh, patch antenna are uh, extremely broadband in uh, that it will work over such a large frequency range they're saying that it works from 5.7 gigahertz up to uh, they claim just below 6 gigahertz uh, around 7.5 uh, 7.50 gigahertz but uh, it's not and uh, they shouldn't be claiming that it is uh, yes it's still got a low frequency response here at the top at its main peak but this is in the area that most people will use at uh, say uh, 5.840 uh, gigahertz for instance you know all around uh, that little area they use quite a large band of uh, the spectrum and uh, it does not work well at all in this area and there's also a danger here because the uh, VSWR that they're claiming is coming from this first frequency response here the uh, 1.5 there is no way that this is uh, the same across all the range of the frequency response of this antenna and even here in the second frequency response it's going to be a little bit higher than that and the danger of using uh, an antenna in a uh, frequency area that uh, has a uh, significantly higher VSWR say in this area uh, is I've got a uh, 4 watt amplifier here in the lab that's uh, for FPV now if you use this antenna with that 4 watt amplifier you're going to get a lot of uh, you know reflections back down the transmission line which can seriously damage equipment when you start putting a lot of power through it you know all, all that uh, RF being reflected back down the line because it's not matched properly and it's got a high VSWR so you can potentially end up damaging uh, your equipment your amplifier and your transmitter so really they're stretching the truth here by saying it's a broadband antenna because it's not and they're stretching the truth with the uh, VSWR as well if uh, they're claiming that this is a uh, broadband antenna that works across all this frequency here then it should be giving you an average of the VSWR and uh, if it is a broadband antenna that works across these two frequencies then this should be a lot lower it should look say something like this uh, a lot lower you can't get a perfect uh, you know v-shaped like this over such a large large area it is very difficult especially with a uh, patch antenna but you can get uh, multiple frequency responses over that area and then you can say that it's a uh, quite a broadband antenna so as we've just seen on the spectrum analyzer you, you know if you're going to use this in the 5.8 gigahertz frequencies the performance from this is going to be absolutely 
dire so i think what we'll do now is uh, try and remove this uh, solder mask here so we can get a better idea of how they're achieving this uh, right hand circular polarization now normally acetone is good for removing this uh, solder mask but i haven't got any so i'm going to try and do it with a cotton bud and some paint stripper and see if i can get it off that way i've got no intentions of ever using this antenna again so if i do destroy it i'm not too uh, bothered about that but i'd like to see how they're achieving this uh, claimed circular polarization so i managed to get a uh, great deal of the solder mask off on the area that we're uh, most concerned about then uh, the paint stripper didn't do too good a job i had to go out and uh, get some acetone and even that i had to remove uh, quite a bit of the top layer of the solder mask so uh, the acetone could do its work but uh, as you can see here we can see what's going on now so what we've got here then we've got the signal being uh, fed here and then it branches off into two along these two transmission lines here although when uh, it's uh, like this on a uh, pcb it's called a micro strip line but uh, it's branching off here and here and uh, this passive part here this l shape it's uh, not touching the transmission line here but because it's so close it's affecting the signal on that line so it's slowing it down slightly so this side is getting the feed a lot quicker than this side and that's how they're achieving the circular polarization this is right hand circular polarization it's going in a clockwise motion because it's faster on this side and slower on this side we're getting that uh, circular polarization working there so it's really a very very simple design and there will be a certain amount of loss with uh, this method as well because you get some of that signal traveling up and then dissipating out of here so you know that's a little bit of loss there and uh, with this only being a small uh, 6 dbi antenna we're getting a little bit of loss from there so you know you it's it's not a very efficient method and uh, you know any kind of helical really will perform much better than this but they have designed it correctly and i mean you may notice there's no right hand corners on this uh, strip line here or here because right hand corners uh, on a strip line when you're designing something like that are a bad idea because a right hand corner will automatically uh, by design become an antenna so you'll have even more loss so we've got nice uh, you know cutoffs to the uh, right angled corners here and uh, here as well on the feed line it's uh, cut off here uh, going down onto the uh, feed signal wire here so it's designed well but uh, you know it just doesn't work well at the frequency you would expect it to work at and as I say because it's only a small 6 dBi and uh, this will give it a certain amount of loss as well it just wouldn't be uh, a very strong performer at all and if you've ever tried to build a uh, crosshair circular polarized antenna or watched uh, a couple of my videos where I've shown you how to make it this uh, is nothing new you're using the same method basically to get the circular polarization into the crosshair with having a uh, delayed line on uh, the legs on the crosshair this is the same thing here but uh, with it having the delayed line on the legs of the crosshair antenna you're not getting that loss so you're getting all your signal to your elements whereas this as i say will generate a certain amount of loss so as for the uh, rest of the antenna then this on the back is just a plain piece of uh, copper here that's the uh, shield and the shield of the coax is connected directly to that and the signal wire goes all the way through doesn't touch the back at all and into that feed point there as well and i did think that they tried to put a crimp on connector onto uh, some semi-rigid coax here but uh, they haven't they've added this shroud here uh, for a little bit of uh, extra protection so you know that is the weakest point of uh, a semi-rigid coax sma setup so they've added this over the top it's just a little bit messy and not uh, crimped on with the proper tool but again you know it's a little bit extra and it will add some uh, you know strength to that point there so you can't knock them for that so to sum up then what we've got here is an antenna that uh, is pretty well made i have to say you know you can't knock the uh, construction techniques 
but uh, it's just not going to work for you at uh, 5.8 gigahertz it's just not going to perform well at all and they are stretching the truth a little bit by saying you know the VSWR is uh, 1.5 they should really have an average over the uh, you know advertised range that they are uh, claiming that this works at but uh, they would never do that because then they would have to uh, advertise a pretty poor VSWR figure and uh, you know as I say if uh, you're wanting to use this at 5.8 gigahertz it's just not going to perform because the the two uh, best uh, frequency responses are below that and above that so I would give this one a miss so I hope you found this uh, video useful it's a little bit different I don't think anybody else is uh, testing this type of antenna by using uh, a spectrum analyzer and looking at it that way I mean you can test this by sticking it on a quadcopter and seeing how far you can go before you start getting a grainy signal or the signal drops out but uh, as far as using a spectrum analyzer or a network analyzer to test these things I don't think anybody else is uh, actually doing it and uh, what I'm finding with a lot of this stuff is it really is a little bit hit and miss the uh, quality and performance that uh, you can get by uh, using some of this I mean sometimes you can pick up something really cheap and uh, drop on but uh, most of the time you pick up something really cheap and it's just cheap so as I say if you did enjoy it then please uh, give it a thumbs up any uh, comments or questions if you've got one of these and you're happy with it then please uh, you know let us know in the comments but uh, as I say you know as you've seen on the uh, spectrum analyzer it just it just isn't going to perform well at all at 5.8 gigahertz I mean yes it's got circular polarization but uh, you're probably better off using uh, you know a dipole antenna and uh, a smaller dipole antenna on your quadcopter I'm pretty sure if you had that set up you'd get a uh, lot better and longer range response from your uh, setup than you would use in this so as I say any comments questions drop them below I'll do my best to answer them and hopefully you'll join me on the next one